Well, hi there guys and welcome to another video. So today guys we have a Raspberry Pi related topic. Um, I'm going to start off by telling you everything that I've got that surrounds me. Um, so I bought this Raspberry Pi 5. Um, I ordered it a long long time ago. It arrived a long time ago and I've only just got around to doing anything with it today. It's the 8 gig version of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I have not opened the box yet so that's good. The reason I got it is because I wanted to try this boy out, the Pinebury Pi NVMe hat. Um, yes, we have reached an era where we can attach NVMEs to Raspberry Pis now that they have the PCIe um, connector, which is exciting. Uh, to go with that, I have a basic integral NVMe, just a half terabyte boy, nothing super special there. Um, additionally, I have this Orico USB to PCIe um, device so that I can just stick um, a, an operating system on that NVMe over on my computer once I've unboxed that. Um, I'll probably just use Ubuntu Desktop to start with just for the purpose of getting it on a screen with a keyboard and mouse and making sure everything seems dandy before I put it to use in its final role. So that's good. Um, I have a Ugreen power supply um, U Green, good brand. Um, I hear the Raspberry Pi is able to suck a good amount of power and do useful things with it. So U Green, brand you can trust. Uh, U Green are not sponsoring this video, but I did nonetheless also get a U Green USB-C cable for the aforementioned powering, and a U Green HDMI to micro HDMI cable um, to plug it in. This monitor only has DVI and VGA so I have a DVI cable and then a DVI to HDMI um, I looked high and low for a straight ordinary coupler there is definitely one within the confines of this flat but I could not find it um, I'm probably going to try and use this um, which is just a um, three input to one output switcher for HDMI um, it is entirely um, powered by the HDMI port it's not active so hopefully the Raspberry Pi has enough welly to make this work. But just in case it doesn't, I found yet another backup solution, which is this device that is powered. Um, it takes a HDMI input on one side, an HDMI output on the other. It's actually an HDMI audio extractor, but we will simply ignore the audio extraction part of it, and presumably as it's powered, this is almost definitely going to work. So yeah, there's my plan B-ish. Um, Anything else relevant on the desk? Yes, I have scissors for opening the packaging, I have screwdrivers for fixing things, and I have some freshly made cornbread um, with jelly infusion because I'm hungry. Right, so without further ado, I'm now going to go and take the scissors to these boxes, um, and then I'll get right back to you afterwards. I have taken some things out of their boxes. Uh, so, we have the U-Green cables, very premium feel, very happy with that. Uh, the case bits, so the case itself, uh, the plate that the Pi goes on, um, the acrylic piece with the fan, took me a while to screw that fan in because I have very little feeling in my fingers. I have very little feeling in my toes, but that's a story for another time. Uh, then the Raspberry Pi itself, the uh, Pinebury Pi hat, and the drive to go with it and then all the other stuff that comes with the case, screws and heat sinks and such. Um, I guess I'll stick the heat sinks on the chips. I mean, the hat will be right on top, so I'll probably just, before I peel the stickers and stick them, make sure that's gonna fit fine. Um, I guess the heat sinks are just going to be pushing heat up into the hat, but that's fine too. Uh, right, let me get on to that. So I've never done anything with GPIO before, um, and there was like a plug through thing for the GPIO, but it wasn't the entire length of the pins, so I wasn't really sure which end it's supposed to go at, but I looked online and found out that the power is at one end opposite the ports, so I kind of assumed that that must be the end to do it, so I've, I've put that in. Uh, then this lovely little ribbon connector. I've seen these before, like keyboards and laptops and stuff. Again, never ever fit one. I think I probably did it right. It seems to be holding, um, and there does look to be enough space between the hat and the board. So I will attach the heat sinks now and then carry on. Uh, it's all very hard work. 
Right, so I haven't attached the board to the case in any which way. I haven't even put the standoffs between the hat and the board. I've literally just boshed it on there because I just want to power this thing up and make sure it works at all. Um, obviously there's nothing on the MVME at the moment, so I'm not expecting much to happen, but it's there, the ribbon's in, the, it's on the, on the board, so I'm going to get the power now and I'm going to plug it in. Here is the power and uh, let's just see if anything happens power going in oh a flash of light i don't know what we'll expect to happen but i would really like something to come out on the screen i noticed that on this box neither the in or oh, right, there we go in and out lights on hey raspberry pi 5 for the win um Okay, well, it's there, that's good. I don't know if anything on this screen should tell me that it sees the NVMe. Um, yeah, don't really know how to interpret any of that. So I guess the next thing for me to do is to pop something actually on that NVMe um, and see if it will boot. Um, so yeah, I will go and do that and then I'll be back again. Well, it may not look any different, but it now has Ubuntu desktop on it. So I'm going to plug it in again, and we're going to see if it boots off it. And if it does, we should be very happy indeed. And if it doesn't, hmm, if it doesn't, we'll have to assume this is one of those weird things whereby it won't boot off NVMe by default, and you first have to do some nonsense with SD cards or something. Um, yep, failed to boot, right. Hmm, boot order, SD. Yeah, so, okay, I will go and find out if there's some way to change the boot order to include the uh, NVMe without first installing an SD card. I don't have a spare SD card, so I guess I could just copy all of this video off the camera, steal its SD card. I don't know, I may be gone a while, but for you, it'll be quite quick indeed. back again. Uh, so I did actually find a SanDisk Extreme Pro 128 gig micro SD card in my other camera. So you will get to continue to see what's going on here. Uh, so I found, uh, courtesy of Jeff Gearling, a name you know, a name you trust, um, a guide on enabling NVMe in the boot order. It does indeed seem that it's not the default to have NVMe in the boot order anywhere. Um, so that was an interesting decision. Right, so as the gentleman's guide uh, involves Raspberry Pi OS rather than Ubuntu, I have flashed Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian, onto this particular SD card. So I'm now going to withdraw power from the device, thus, and I am going to plug this SD card in, down here, thus, I preferred the good old days when SD cards had little clicky things that made it feel like some good was happening. But anyway, and let's power it back up again. So hopefully, this time it will now boot off the SD card and we'll get into Raspberry Pi OS. Um, and then we can follow the instructions provided and see if it works to change the boot order. Um, while I'm in there, I guess I can also just LSPCI and make sure that this NVMe is seen at all, because that's probably quite a useful first thing to do. Anyway, no need for you to sit and watch me through this process. Uh, if you need to know how to do this, you can Google it just like I did. Well, I got it to try and boot off NVMe. It does seem to be in the boot order now, um, but uh, it just says PCIe timeout. So, I don't know. Um, I have taken this board off and on about a billion times now. GPIO connectors, by the way, always have to seem to resort to my pliers to actually manage to get this off and on and have to unbend the pins every time. So, 
that seems like an awful connector but anyway i'm not here to judge i think i probably damaged the ribbon cable um if if i had to make a guess as to what was wrong um it is finicky and yeah young man's game i'm just going to try something else i'll fill you in on the details if it works note 970 evo by samsung being plugged in ever so jankily uh, onto the primary pie because that doesn't actually fit um powering on um i'll fill you in on the details if this actually works i decided to try something else just before i gave up actually technically it was just after i gave up oh and good job i didn't give up that seems to be working uh so i read a thing apparently not all nvmes will work with the raspberry pi um now the raspberry pi has well technically speaking it's capable of gen 3 um pcie but they configure it for Gen 2 and you have to explicitly enable Gen 3 and they don't support it, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, but that's not a problem. The problem is it only uses two lanes of PCI Express, not the four that you usually associate with NVMe. And not all NVMe's will work with two lanes, even though it's entirely in spec and they probably all should. And it looks like Samsung has done a good job and Integral has done a bad job. So this half terabyte Samsung NVMe works fine with the Pi. This similar half terabyte one by Integral does not. So I probably do have a working solution, um, but not right now because I do not think that will fit in the case sticking out the back. Um, I will forthwith order another NVMe of this particular form factor, small boy, um, and try it out. Here we have the delivery of a new vehicle, a Volkswagen to rock, hot off the production line to us. Note how the delivery person skillfully reverses the vehicle down the ramp. What a pro. I think we can all agree, he's done that before. An amount of time has passed, and having concluded that that other NVMe is simply not going to work in a times two configuration, I redeployed it somewhere else where it works perfectly, and presumably will continue to do forever. And I have ordered for myself another NVMe, because apparently I'm just made of money and can afford to throw it all away to make YouTube videos. Um, so. I'll get this new drive, I will take it out of its packaging and I will mount it in this and go and image it and then bring it back and try and boot it. And all the same things will happen again, so hopefully this one will work because, well, Corsair, it's a name you know, it's a name you trust. Right, okay, I've mounted the boy. I will admit, I've lost the screw I had originally, so uh, it's a little bit loose, but it's not going anywhere, it will do, I'm past caring. Right, HDMI is connected, I'm going to plug the power in. This is it, if this doesn't work, I'm done, because it's annoying. Uh, right, the lights are on, uh, the activity light is flashing on the NVMe, no HDMI lights yet. Oh, HDMI lights, ooh! Linux kernel messages. Ooh, Ubuntu. A bunny. Yes. Well, okay. That's positive. That is positive. That's not the correct time or month, but I'm still pretty pleased with this. Um, that actually doesn't seem too slow. That's not too shabby. English UK. Nice. Um, well, I mean, this is what we're used to. This is an ordinary Ubuntu booting-based affair. There we have it in its case, all mounted up, ready to go, all built. Let's plug it in one last time and make sure we didn't blow anything up 
while putting the case together. The case was a bit of a tricky beast. Um, well, I suppose if you're used to working on full-size computers as I am, um, and nice computers at that. But no, it's it's absolutely fine, absolutely fit for purpose. Right, power to the unit. Lights and stuff inside the case. Fan, not sp a fan spinning, there we go. Fan is spinning, lights are glowing. 5.6 watts, 7.5 watts. There's some wattage being drawn. Uh, eight watts and 10 watts Ooh, 11 watts wow hardcore right there you go all done one raspberry pi 5 nvme um, ubuntu in its case with fan heat sinks nvme 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 um right well guys that's about it for today's video um i didn't much enjoy that but uh, at least i now have a fully working machine that i have no use for um if you like the video, then uh, do please leave me a comment below telling me about uh, the last time you used an NVMe um, in a single board computer and what your experience was, or just any comment, because nobody ever comments on the stuff I ask about. Um, other than that, guys, I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, but until then, guys, there's very little more uh, for me to say, except... Well, goodbye. I'm done with this pile of junk as far as I'm concerned.